Hey, what's up, YouTube? Hope you're having a good day. Today we're back at, at it with another breakdown. This time featuring Kenji. Uh, once again, I do want to say thank you to everyone who's been uh, showing support to the videos. I'm glad you all have been enjoying these breakdowns. Even had some people come to my stream and say uh, these breakdowns have been helping. So definitely appreciate the support. Um, yeah. So today we're gonna be featuring Kenji, and Kenji has been a character who's been. Kenji uh top 10 literally since like this game came out <laughs> like arguably top five him and johnny i'd say are the two characters in this whole roster that and sanel i guess that haven't really changed their uh their tiers at all like because you know they just have their toolkits are too good where unless you nerf them in a massive way they're gonna pretty much be top tier every patch um I did want to say, I did want to make a Sindel video because I know a lot of people were asking for it, but I couldn't really think of a title for that video if I wanted to do one because for Homelander, I did the most broken character. For Havoc, I did the best character, and Sindel is literally like top three, top two, like unarguably, so I don't really know what to put the title for it. So if you guys have any ideas, definitely let me know. But yeah, we're going to be covering Kenshi. I'm not going to do like an end of guide to Kenshi because there is a lot to go for Kenshi, like to go over. But, you know, I'll be kind of generalizing a lot of things that Kenshi does. And obviously with these breakdowns, my point is to try to show y'all why these characters are as good as they are and how to fight against them. So, hope you guys enjoy as always. Thank you guys for the support and let's get into it. So, right off the bat, Kenshi, uh, his archetype is... He doesn't really have a range that he wants to play at. It's really just matchup dependent. So, you know... And Sakita, like, he obviously wants to get in, but he, he wouldn't mind, like, zoning something. But if, if a character makes it harder to use his projectile, which is his main projectile, and, you know, it is over it, but you can jump it, so it does have risk to it, then he definitely has to play up close. So, uh, Kenshi's whole goal as a character is literally to get Sento stance out. Kenshi has two stances. He has his balance stance, which is a normal stance. Then he has Sento stance. And then he has, so he has Sento stance with the spirit. But when the spirit runs out, he has normal Sento stance, which is basically the same stance, except you don't have the ghost to help you, right? So technically, he has three stances, if you really think about it. Um, this character's main goal is literally just to hit you, like, every single time. Like, his main goal in a match is to find a hit and get Sento out. That's pretty much his game plan. Now, depending on the cameo you're using, you play him in a different way, and depending on the cameo the Kenshi player is using, you play against him in a different type of way. So, for example... Uh, well, we'll get to cameos later. For, for now, let's just break him down in like a quick type of way. So, Kenshi, uh, right off the bat, you'll notice he has really good movement. Like, his back dash is probably... Like, you see how he's one second he's here and another second he's there. His back dash is probably top three in the game. Like, his back dash is actually insane. Um, so, when you mix in that... And his forward dash is really good. When you mix in that, like his movement is crazy. And then you mix in the range of his buttons. Like, he has probably some of the best range buttons in the game. Back to amazing with punish tool. It's minus four on block, but you can, you know, cancel it into this special move, which is kind of like a projectile cancel in a way. And there's like a mind game on this. You release it right away. Uh, it's minus 11, but the EX version is completely safe. And there's a mind game on that too. That's plus nine if you hold that. Same with this. If you hold this all the way, it's actually plus on block. Obviously, there is a mind game to that, right? But back to is your main whiff punish tool so if you see anyone whiffing you know this is literally a godlike whiff punish tool now same goes for his 4 to 2 which is, this is his he has two main strings 4 to 2 and 1 4 1 4 to 2 is this string uh, as you guys know it's a it's a really good mid probably one of the best reaching mids in the game it does have a gap on the second hit but you can stagger the first hit and it's completely safe minus 6 the second hit is minus 7 on block so completely safe as well and he does have this last hit, which is safe with pushback. But there is a mind game to it, to where if they flawless block it, it is punishable. Pretty sure it becomes like minus 20. Yeah, minus 20 right there. But the mind game is, you know, with this blast, this blast is kind of like to cover his gap. So if I do this, and you try to flawless block, as Takeda, you will get hit by this move, and this move just sends you full screen. But that's kind of the mind game on it, which is why, you know, flawless blocking is risky. But. That's basically like, this is like his neutral reset, or just let me get a quick hit. Um, his other main string that I was talking about, 141, is kind of like his main jab string. It's, it's not a real auto shimmy, which means, you know, a shimmy is like a move or 
you know, a sequ a string, whatever it is, a button that makes you think they're going for a throw. So, an auto shimmy is literally just like a, you know, that, but it auto times a shimmy for you. And this isn't a real auto shimmy, meaning you can't, you can distinguish this from a real throw. Um, but it can definitely catch you off guard. You know, it's a low and it's pretty quick. So if you're not watching your toes for a second and he can stagger, which is really good. Like stand one stagger, neutral and block. This is minus six. The full string is punishable, but like I said, this move right here, you can make it safe. So that's minus one. So basically to make anything safe, he'll do that. Uh, you know, he doesn't really have to do this with this, but if he wants to add that mind game. Like I said, this is like, um, probably top three with fun shows in the game. Like, if Takeda approaches me and I'm moving, I see him with, like, you're gonna really, you're gonna with punish him, like, a lot of time. And obviously, every time you punish somebody, depending on the game you're using, that's when you get the Sento out, <laughs> and then you start that whole mind game. So, as you can see, his buttons and movement are already amazing. I forgot to mention... One of his best buttons that I feel like people don't use enough is Sweep. The Sweep is insane, like, probably another top three sweep in the game. Um, minus six, you guys see the range on that, like, it's... <laughs> I don't even have to talk about the range on that, so... Right off the bat, you can see, like, this whole range, he controls it with this button. And this button is fully a confirmable, so that's why if you hit any of these buttons, you're getting a full combo pretty much every time. Um, if you react and hit confirm this button, full combo full combo and then with this you also get a full combo right here <coughs> and if you do the full string you also get a full combo so yeah he's definitely not lacking like the the hit confirm mid department um so yeah basically his his objective is to get a hit and then get sent to out now since i that's pretty much it for balance stance i'm pretty sure let me get to oh he also has this one string two one two string is pretty good ends in overhead uh, stagger is really good as well. It's minus three, and two is plus two, so you know that's also really good. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, unless I'm missing something. Let me make sure I'm not. You could end this back two string with that, but honestly, Kenshi's don't really use that. It is safe on block. Oh, it's minus save with pushback, technically safe. But aside from that, yeah, that's really it for Kenji. Um, you don't really use that string, so. Now, let's get into Sento Stance. So, like I said, I'll go in over Sento Stance be, uh, without the Ghost. And I'll show you guys how Sento Stance works with the Ghost. Or the Spirit. Um, so, Sento Stance, your, normal, your normals kind of change a bit and you get some new normal. So, back to, which was, you know, this button right here. This changes into an overhead. And this overhead is technically punishable on block. It does have some pushback on it, so if you do it from here, you're going to be safe against some characters. If you do a boy blank, you're punishable. So if I'm Takeda and I block this, I can dash up punish. And if I try to punish it from like this range, I still can, but you know, it's a bit hard. So some characters actually struggle with punishing that. Takeda is not one of them. Um, so yeah, back two becomes an overhead. He gets a brand new string back one too. This is a low launcher, but it is unsafe on block. Stagger is minus five, so pretty good. But, you know, right off the bat, he has a 50-50 option, either overhead and or low and depending on the cam you're using the overhead doesn't give you a combo by itself but for a cam you're like Movado obviously I had a combo like that right and he also gets like a new launcher not really a crazy launcher but since he doesn't have his spirit uh his uh ghost moves he gets like a new just a normal launcher like that <coughs> um and aside from that he gets his 422 gets replaced so instead of being that far reaching mid he it becomes an 11 frame mid so it's faster still has that gap in it um, but the string by itself is safe on block, so, you know, it's your typical 11 frame mid, uh, fully hit confirmable, safe on block, but, you know, they could armor it. Ward 1-1, really far reaching high, excuse 11 frame high, so if you're whiff punish, if you're whiffing at all, yeah, don't whiff against this stand, like, I'll be honest, his normals in this stance are even better than his normals in a normal stance. Um, even when it comes to his pokes, like down three is an insane poke. If you guys look at the frame that on this poke, minus eight on block. Down four, <laughs> probably the best poke in the game when he when he's in the stance. Like it's minus ten, but all that pushback. Down three also has insane range. Uh, his sweep is insane as well. So yeah, you see basically the normals. He gets an overhead, a low, of really far reaching high to check you. A Eleven frame mid. A sweep, so his normals are- oh, he also has- I forgot about the main button you get in this. Or four, this is a plus one mid. K 
can't duck this at all, so if he hits you with this bun, you're he's plus one, so you can play a mind game, whether to down one check you or to keep doing it repeatedly. And just like, you know, any other thing, you can use Mavado to combo that. So you already, so right off the bat, you know, Mavado, you gotta guess between overhead, you get hit by this, you get the launcher. And he could commit to this, but this is more risky, so, you know. It's basically, it is a two way guess, but one of the options is more risky. Well, they're both really risky, but you know, it just depends. And obviously, if you just want to do this, you can combo that as well. Now, um, if you're wondering why does he have way better buttons, what's the drawback? He doesn't have access to his armored reversal. So, in his normal stance, he has this move, which is his armor move. You know, it's your typical armor, so Takeda does this string, like an armor, get him off me, right? But if I'm in this stance, I don't have armor at all. Like, that means I don't have a reversal, which means if somebody using Farah cameo, this is why he's kind of struggling at the moment against Farah cameo. Because if you're in that central stance and you don't have, obviously you don't have a reversal. If somebody pulls out Farah, most of the time the counterplay to that is to try to armor on reaction. But since you don't have an armor, he kind of just has to hold 50/50s anytime he's in the stance without ghost. So that's kind of like why. He's not, like, probably I wouldn't say he's top 5. I would say he's definitely top 10, but, um, <clears throat> I would not say he's top 5 because, you hear that? <laughs> I wouldn't say he's top 5 because he's definitely the meta right now isn't favoring him in, his, in the best way. Um, okay, now let's go over, so basically that's Sento Stance. Now, when you pull out Sento Stance with the Ghost, so let me explain how the Ghost works. When you go into this stance, this is down back one. Uh, central stance, you basically enter central stance, but you enter with the ghost, right? And the ghost has a 15 second cooldown. So if you, if you look at the top left, you basically replaces your cameo. So you can't use your cameo while uh, the ghost is out. Basically becomes your cameo, right? But it's fine, because it's the best cameo in the game. <laughs> um, and if this bar runs out, you can actually resummon for one bar. So as you see, it resets the timer, so that means if I'm in central stance without the ghost, I can also resummon. But... You can't just resummon anytime you want, because if you just resummon, you know, it is punishable. So, if I see you do it, I can just react punish. But typically, you want to try to get a hit, um, or something like that, before you resummon. Which is what the cameos are for. Like, the cameos are pretty much... Cameo you're using pretty much makes up how you approach playing Kenshi, based on a matchup. Um, now, let me go over the ghost. So, this ghost has four different moves. There's Sento 1. Which is basically, you know, it's the same thing as 1, 2, 3, 4, like the buttons. Sento 1 is this high move. This is basically to check you, like, if I pull out Sento and I know you're going to backdash and make a hard read about that, I can catch you with that. And this is very plus on block. I mean, plus on hit, so I get a combo for that. It also helps you in some combos, so, like, if I do, um, if I do, like, this, for example, like, his overhead, and I get this combo, right? It also helps in juggles. And Sento 2, this is like your main, like this is your on block pressure. Like, if I do an unsafe string, so like back one to the low string, I can make this safe with that. Right, so basically, I get a safe launcher. Uh, Sento 3 is his like quote unquote launcher, so if I hit you with this string, I get a launcher, this string. So it's, like, it's just like a launcher, you know? So 3 comes in, you get launched. Sento 4, it's like 3 hits. This is kind of an armor breaker. So if you think someone's going to wake up, um, especially like Havoc, for example, his armor has four hits. If I think he's going to wake up, I could just do four. I can do, you know, Sento four and then do this, and that's five hits right there. Well, technically four, but if I do this, that's five hits. So that's five hits of armor breaker right there. Um, now, there's also <laughs> the cheapest part about Sento that's always been a thing, or this spirit, is the fact that you can control the spirit while blocking. Now, the reason I say this character is probably the most complex is that first, when you're trying to learn him, he's not, I mean, you're basically controlling two characters at the same time, right? The way this ghost works is, whenever you move, he moves. Whenever you press a button, the ghost does a button. That can mess up your combo, so I'm just doing this, and he's just doing whatever, and I'm not controlling him. Yeah, my combos mess up, and I'm not getting, like, any... So, the way you control him is, if you don't want the ghost to do anything, you hold R1. You hold the cameo button while you're doing combos. So, if I don't want him to move, this is what happens if I just do this combo without... See how he, when I do back two, it'll do Sento two, so I can't get that combo. So if I'm holding R1 and stopping the ghost from doing anything, I'll do back two, release R1, 
and then do three. And you can move them as well while you're doing combos. And there you go. And there's something called negative edge, so it's basically um, sometimes the on recovery you don't have to hold R1. So right here, if I just mash three, Tencento is just recovering. And my character is still in the middle of a string. I can call Sento to do his attack without having to hold anything, and just auto times that right. So I can do four, two, three, comma under, block, control Sento, auto meaty, and you see you're basically playing a two-man game. So like Sento is like your he's like your approach. So since you're blocking, you're taking no risk other than maybe if somebody dash up grabs you right. So you just do that. You basically let Sento play for you, and that's basically what it is. Now he also gets this. Yeah, he gets two specials, so he gets down back four, which is this puts you in a sandwich. So Sento pressure has two different type of pressure. There's same side pressure, which is you know it's basically when I'm on me and Sento are on the same side, which means uh, he still has access to all his pressure. But as you see, if you're mid screen, the far the more things I do, the farther pushes you back from me, which means you know you have all this room to work with. Now the ideal situation for Kenshi is either put you in a corner. If I'm in the corner, and even if I'm like this, you know, you got nowhere to go, right? Now, uh, the other thing he has is a sandwich, so it's either put you in the corner, or put you in the sandwich. Now, down back four, auto put you in the sandwich. And the reason it's a sandwich is because I'm here, Sento's there, and <laughs> you're in the middle, so you're basically the sandwich. So here, um, this is basically why it's cheap. Like, remember when I was talking about Sento stands by itself? He has an overhead and a low, right? Now, by themselves, they're unsafe, but when you have Sento out... I put you in a sandwich. So if I uh, do this move, put you in a sandwich off the bat. This is what I have now. Say 50 50, say 50 50, say 50 50, say 50 50. Not even the say 50 50 plus 50 50. And then this is just block pressure, a limited block pressure right there. That's plus one into jail. So you see, I can do block pressure, I can mix you. And this is all hit confirmer, by the way. So. If I hit you with this, you know, while I'm holding R1, hit you with that, full combo, hit you with the low, full combo, so it's hit confirmable, plus on block, so, and you see how strong this just is, it's just, it's plus 50-50s into looping 50-50s, so you automatically see how strong this character is and why his main goal in every match was to get this ghost out, and depend on the cameo you're using, you know, that's why his cameos are very important, because they help him get the ghost out in different type of ways um so aside from that oh yeah, yeah let me go over i forgot this move yeah so down back for our two property this is just a normal one sandwich now it also has an ex property on it this move i'm pretty sure you guys have seen this this is a mid projectile and it's pretty fast like it's pretty fast like this is pretty much unreactable and if you get hit by this it actually does a big chunk of damage it does 18 percent so the whole mind game of this is if Sento's running out and you're trying to, you know, if they're trying to catch Sento, then you can do this. And then you catch them with this, this is 18% of your health. Now, uh, it does waste most of the Sento bar, but, you know, you get 18. You can do this, you can do this as long as Sento is out. So, as long as he's still out, it does cost the bar, but you can do this, you know, as long as he's out there. Try to catch them. Um, now, that's pretty much Kenshi and Nusha, and that's where, you know, th that's where the layered offense starts getting in, like... Plus on block, plus on block, plus on block, that's plus on block. If I just want to go for chip, I can do this. And the, you know, this is the broken part about Kenshi and the resum. This is like the thing I've kind of talked about getting nerfed for him though for the longest, but I feel like as the more we played, I realized why. Or I, I just kind of became fine with him having it because he does have some hard matchups, so you know, resum and staying one bar is fine. I always thought it should be like. Like when you reset, I mean, I still think maybe sometimes when I play against the character that if you resummon, you should not get 15 seconds. And the reason I talk about that is because when this character has Sento out and you're in the corner like this, you're basically guessing 50 50. Like, you know, this is low, low, overhead. You're basically guessing for 15 straight seconds. And anytime he hits you, by the way, he gets a full comma, right? So if I get this, bam, 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 to another guess. So you're basically getting looped into 50-50s the whole time, right? Now the reason resummon is so dumb is because it's a 15 second timer, which means you're already holding 15 seconds of mix, 
or 10 seconds, whatever it is. And even though, even like if you've blocked all of this, if he manages to open you up with a 50 50 at the end, even, we'll just do this. Resummon. That's another 15 seconds of straight mix. Which is why I think this move has always been done. So, you know, if I just mix you and I can't land a hit, you've guessed right like third, three or four times in a row, I land a hit. I can use Sento 2. So remember Sento 2, this is what keeps you safe. This is. When you call Sento or resummon, you can immediately do an attack, right? The new negative edge. And what this does is it checks you poking. So if I'm Takeda, for example, and Kenchi does. Uh, oh, wait, let me turn him off a block. If I'm Takeda and Kenchi does. You know, back to. Unless he resummons. And I try to poke here. If I, do, if I try to check him resummoning, for example. Um. Based on the setup, I'm pretty sure you can get guaranteed meter. So if I do, bam, bam, yeah, that should meet you perfectly right there. If not stand for, I'm pretty sure it's another one. Yeah, there you go. So I can't even poke that. So which means I just got I mi I got mixed. So let's say you blocked 12 seconds of straight mix. You got opened up by 50-50 right at the end, and that's another old 15 seconds of straight mix again. So that's why with, with the resummon move, I've kind of just, you know, if they want to keep it one bar, sure. I feel like they definitely don't want to nerf it <laughs> at this point. It's already been a year. But I still think there's one nerf that should be uh, used for Kenshi, and that's a damage nerf. Especially when it's in Sento form, because you're already guessing on 50 50s, right? And uh, Kenshi's not using any resources, like War Rise. So if I get hit for this, buy this overhead, for example. You guys just see how much damage this does. Mirrorless. That's 40. I get hit by a low. I'm um, pretty sure you can get like... I'm not sure what the optimum was, but I've, I've seen people do this. Bam, 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 bam. And then you can do that again. So you can do bam, bam, bam. And remember, you're holding Sento. This is how you use Sento, by the way. I'm holding R1. If, I, if you guys want me to show you my buttons, there's a wonder how to use this character. That's why I said it's not really a guy because he is more complex, but it's kind of a breakdown of him. Um, I'm holding R1, right? I'm holding cameo meter the whole time there. So I'm doing back one, two, which is a string. Holding R1 still. Stand four. And I let go of R1 and do Sento. Or two. And since, you know, Sento's still recovering. Or the spirit, I don't have to use... Uh, I don't have to hold R1. I can negative edge the button since I'm still in recovery. I do four, one... Or two, two, four, four. So that's an example of a combo. But you can also do stuff like this. Now you can do bam, 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 bam. And then you know. That's basically the combo. I'm not I'm pretty sure it's not the multi all, but that's an example. That's 35. Now if you're wondering why I'm asking for a damage nerf. <laughs> and I've always been asking for this, it's cause like you're already taking 40 meterless to 45. In the corner, if, uh, if you get hit mid screen, by the way, just look at this damage. You guys see what I'm talking about? That's 43% off an unreactable safe overhead. So I'm the low. If I do the low here, that's 35 in the mix. And you guys basically see how that works, right? Um, and remember, this is the strongest thing about Kenshi. Since he can do this while blocking, he doesn't have to worry. Like if he if, if he thinks he's you're gonna armor, um, he can just block and meet you. So if I'm Takeda and I, if I basically am playing against Takeda, I think he's gonna wake up. If I put Takeda on get up, obviously Takeda's wake up isn't the best, but I put him on wake up and I do this string right here. I can just block and then let Central meet you for me. So if I do this. Well, that's that's why you know if you're in the sandwich, just a warrior. It's the ultimate. I just block, let him meaty, and then I just, oh, you, <laughs> like you, you see what I mean? Like I don't have to take a risk while I'm doing this. And I see you do that, center conversion into another sandwich. That's why you don't want to wake up against scared. Like it's very risky. Um, pre-patch like Tanya and Kung Lao made it hard for him, more so like Tanya because uh, she can't. You know, get out for free, but now Tanya's armor got nerfed, so in a way, two of his hard matchups got easier. 
But like I said, with Farah cameo, since you don't have a reversal, if I'm Takeda and I'm playing Farah, for example, like, um, since the only counterplay to Farah, by the way, nerf Farah, I don't care. <laughs> since the only counterplay to Farah is just, like, armoring, Takeda does, like, this. I can't do anything about it, you know? I can try to interrupt him. Which, that string isn't real, but, like, you know. Against, like, some strings where that actually jails, like, I just gotta hold this mix every time. Which is really dumb. Takeda isn't the best with Farah, but, you know, like a character like Scorpion, or Natara, or, you know, Homeland, or even any character that uses Farah, it's very annoying. Um, another thing is, you also can't reverse so, you know, Takeda's main string back to one. The counterplay to this is armoring. I'm stuck in the stance, I can't armor. So I literally have to hold this string and just play the flawless block line game every time. Which basically gives Takeda uh, access to his best string without having to worry about a reversal. So that is the flaw with Central Stance. The fact that he's in a reversal. Now, since I'm pretty much covered, like, or done my best to cover how Kenshi works. Now let me show you guys how to play against this character. Because I feel like a lot of people, the way you play against this character, there's a lot of things. Like, uh, he does have insane pressure. But based on the character you're playing against, the first thing is if he's stuck in central stance with nothing, like no uh, armor or anything, like Homelander can abuse his mix since you can't armor anything. Homelander is just able to mix him and do like use Pharaoh, do what he wants. Like basically, you're able to uh, kind of abuse Kenshi with pressure. But the thing is, what Kenshi is looking for in his stance is remember, he still has amazing normals, right? Kenshi is looking for any hit to resummon. That's his game plan. Or he wants to get back into his normal stance. Now, they can do this anytime they want, but this is why it's very. This is probably like. This is where it st starts to counterplay for Kenshi. When he's in this stance, so if Kenshi gets Sento out and this full 15 seconds runs out, anytime he can resummon, like I said, if you react to that, it's punishable. And when he doesn't have a ghost at all, he might try to go back into this stance, so you want to be literally looking for that. And the second he does that, you get a full comp punish. That's very unsafe. So Ken good Kenshi players won't really do that against you if you know how to fight Kenshi. Because it's very risky, to be honest. Um, so that's Kenshi's flaw. It's, his biggest flaw is really just being stuck in this stance. And aside from that, if you guys are wondering how to counterplay the ghost itself. So this is how the ghost works. When he has a ghost out... He basically has to approach you, right? Because he's trying to get you in the mix. And the reason Kenji wants to hit you and approach you is because he wants to put you in that sandwich or that pressure situation. Because if he's stuck in this stance with no ghost, he's basically like... He does have good normals, but he has no reversal, so he's basically struggling, right? But he wants to hit you. That's why, you know, they'll put ghost out and chase you. And what the ghost does is... Or how to counterplay the ghost, for example. You can actually poke the ghost. So while the ghost is chasing you... You can poke him, you can hit him. And what this does is it interrupts the ghost for about 2 seconds out of the 15 seconds. So if I hit him twice, I just took 4 seconds off the ghost, right? And you can hit him on every normal. You can hit him with a projectile. He, he's basically a normal character, like, he has a normal character hitbox. So if I, for example, Takeda, I can do this. And this will check him. Now the mind game here, remember, is I told you that... If I think you're going to check my ghost, I can do this, and that catches you for 18%, so you definitely got to watch out for that, and, uh, Kenshi also had, oh, let me go over Kenshi's Fatal Blow while we're at it. Kenshi's Fatal Blow is, like, one of the best ones in the game, too. You can react to anything, so, if you do any projectile against me, I can just Fatal Blow, we'll call my reaction, I mean, full reaction. And let me also show you why I think he needs a damage nerf. Just, just look how easy this link is to do, right? It's the most simple combo you'll ever see. Especially if you play Kenshi and you know him. This is the most simple combo you'll ever see in your life. And I just want you to look at the damage. So yeah, I just took 54. Now if I do the optimal. <laughs> if I do the optimal route. Decide to cash out. You just see how much damage he does. That's pretty much 60. And if even if I don't want to, if I want to really catch off for damage, I want to spend one bar. I can do this route. So I can do bam, 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 bam. 
Oh no, that doesn't work. I mean, I meant uh, this. Actually, you're not really gonna do this route unless you're in a corner, but you can do this if you just want to end the game. You know, they end this with it's like the brutal route. You can just do that, and that does pretty much 40. It is for a bar, so you wouldn't really do it unless you want a brutal. But in a corner, like you know, obviously you could do that route that I was showing you guys. And that's that right there is yeah 46 percent so the damage is insane fatal was insane but yeah so let's get back to counter playing the ghost um yeah with the ghost he can he can uh you can poke the ghost on block so if he has a ghost out and it's approaching you you can poke him reset him so basically the counter play is whenever you get sento out get out of there you know what i mean like you j you don't want to be near this character you want to run away that's why some characters are better than doing that others right so depending on you just want to get out you want to wait that central timer but keep in mind while you're wasting the central timer you need to always be aware of what kenshi is doing so the second that can, like and you can see it top left right that's the cameo bar as it goes down a kenshi doesn't want to be stuck in the stand so they they might look for a resummon they might look for they might try to do an attack and then resummon or go into the stance and if you're looking for that like if you poke him for example and you're looking for that they're dead, right? So, while you're poking the ghost, while you're worrying about Sento, you have to look at what Kenshi is doing. So basically, whenever he has Sento out, run away. Like, you want to just run away and keep poking Sento. Now, what a good Kenshi will do is, they'll actually walk in front of Sento. So, they'll keep him still, and they'll body block for Sento. And that's where it gets annoying, you know? When you fight a good Kenshi, they'll burst the body block for Sento. So, it's not as easy to hit him. Um, but, you have all the screen to work with, so... That's why you gotta work with it. And that's why when you're in a corner, it's like, you don't want to be in a corner in this character. If you're in a corner, like, sometimes, when you get Sento out, it's like GG's. Now, whether, when it comes to counterplay on block, um, with Kenshi, some characters can punish, so, like I said, it's dependent. With Johnny, thankfully, if Kenshi does back to and I guess right, I can shadow kick him. Pretty much guaranteed every time as a punish, unless he does this. Like, that's completely safe, but it doesn't give him a combo as easy as the other one. You see how that drops? So if I just want to be safe with Kenshi, I'll do that. That's a mind game. If I do one to get the combo, then it's not safe. And this this is pretty much safe if I perfect jail it, so nobody can armor this. Now the mind game is, if he does this string, 4-2-2, two, two, this string has a gap in it, right? So if I'm playing against Kenshi, and I see him do this string, try and this pressure... I can armor this, and anytime Kenshi gets hit, by the way, Sento goes out, like, he goes out of place, so, I can armor that string, um, and yeah, any string he does that has a gap in it, you can armor, the counter play is to poke him, run away, wait for the timer, watch what Kenshi's doing, and you can armor, and it's very important to save either your bar or breaker, saving your bar against Kenshi is very important, because if he does finally land that hit, which landing a hit isn't the easiest thing for him. That's why I'll get into the cameos. Uh, saving your bar against him is very important. Just because you don't... Even if you finally get hit, you don't want to be stuck in this situation. So you want to break. And when you break, it deactivates Sento. You're full screen. And you can waste the time here, right? So saving your break is important. Um, now let me get to the cameos. Let me cover his cameos. So the way his cameos work is... Every cameo gives him something new or different. And how to open Sento. So... With Mavado, you get like conversion, so you know, I do this, I can pull out Sento every time. So I get guaranteed Sento every time I get a hit. So I can do that into Mavado right there, so. And then block, start my pressure, right? Um, Now, what this gives him is Kenshi's, like I said, the Kenshi's 141 isn't a real auto shimmy. So he doesn't really have a reason to hit you since it's over overhead or low. But with Movado, if I back grab you, he actually is able to pull out Sento. Which is very strong. So, just being able to back grab you and pull out Sento is such a strong tool. And that's why this game is really good. And also, when he's in, this also helps his Sento stance, like I said, because he has conversions off of this. Anytime you get a conversion off that, you're able to rec uh, recall Sento. Or, yeah, so that's what Movado basically gives him. He gives him that. Um, grab, oh, it also works in this, so if I do this, 
also able to do it. So you basically see what Movado gives him in, in, in a way. He basically gives him a grab combo and he also gives him auto converts. So that's why Movado is really good. Uh, aside from that, if we go to his other cameo, Sub Zero gives him hit confirm. So it's kind of the same with Movado, but Sub Zero gives him the other things. Obviously, you have ice armor, so it's getting on zoning and it lets you play your zoning game a bit better. Uh, he gets a 13% forward grab, so even if you don't want to get opened up, he still is getting a pretty good uh, amount of damage off his grabs. And if he hits you anytime, any literally any touch, like whether it's an anti or anything, he can do this, Santa call, put you in a sandwich. So this is why this team is very strong, because any touch, you make any mistake, he's... So if I wave punish you, for example, you see how much damage he gets off of this combo right here. That's 42 into you guess for game. If you guess wrong, resummon, start my whole pressure. So you essentially see how Kenshi works. Like that's basically what he does. And then depending on the cameo he's using, you know, that's what he wants to do. It'll, this also complements this string. You can do stuff like this to reset neutral. You can do that. Um another thing is they just gave Sub Zero move a new a, a parry, so Kenshi gets a parry with the stance too, so if you get touched by this parry at all. We'll combo it and get Sento out. So if I do, you could get Sento out like this, but you gotta do it pretty fast, so it's not really reactable. You do that, you can EX this move to get a better knockdown. Guaranteed sandwich or guaranteed Sento. Um, and then you know with this move, if you just want to chuck yourself at them, you also get plus stream. So that's why Sub Zero is really good. I'd say his best cameo right now is probably Striker. But you see how these other cameos, like, depending on the matchup you're playing, Sub-Zero helps you get in, Movado helps you open up somebody easier. Striker is a different type of cameo. He, like, his main goal is to cover Sentinel, like, allow you to pull out Sentinel on block. Do stuff like that. And now this does have a gap, and depending on the character you're using, you have different options here. Like, with Tegida, I'd probably be able to armor it if I block this, because it could jail, but depending on the character you're playing, like it's actually hitbox dependent, so some characters have an easier time to get out than others. So if I try to poke this, Nage will hit me, right? If I don't have my po my poke properly. But there is a timing to where it even catches your down one, and I'm able to do two, so. Right there, that catches my down one. But if I see him do this, I can armor, and Takeda's armor goes forward, so it actually avoids the nades. And then, like I said, when you do this, anytime you do this, <laughs> When you have Sento out, run away. Like, I promise you. Run away. The second Kenshi lands a poke, you see this dude right here, even if he's asleep, he wakes up, and then you're stuck in this blender again. So, you want to run away until the Sento time. That's basically how you play against Kenshi. You run away. And then you mix up your armor during his block strings. And the more you play against Kenshi, the more you know how to deal with him. He's definitely a complex character to fight and a complex character to play. But, um, that's basically what his cameos do. I'd say Striker is the best, but Sub-Zero and Movado are really good in certain matchups. Uh, and the reason Striker is the best, if you guys are wondering, is because even in this stance, like his Sento stance, he's able to do, like, you know, he's able to get that now, because that launches. So he's able to get grenades in the mix. He gets out the corner easier, because, you know, you can always do this with Striker. So if I'm in the corner, on Striker nades, anytime you get hit by these, I get a full combo, so I'll do that. Three something. And start my pressure. Sandwich. You know, that's basically how Kenshi works. But yeah, that's basically the breakdown of Kenshi. This is definitely going to be longer than my other breakdowns, but, you know, Kenshi is a pretty complex character to explain. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching, as always. Definitely let me know your thoughts on the Sindel title, because I can't think of one. And let me know if you guys are still enjoying these breakdowns. And as always, have a great day, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out, y'all.